Thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. All right, I don't really know if this is the best way to do this or not. Oh man, I'll tell you what, no matter how many good plans I make, I think I'm gonna get two videos out a week. Something comes up and uh, it doesn't happen. It's been three weeks since I got a video up. But today I wanted to do kind of an update video, especially on like the raised garden beds that I've done and see how they've held up. Let's go to the backyard and look at, start back there. One of the reasons that I haven't been able to film is because I've actually had of all things, chicken pox for the last two weeks. And um, <laughs> it's been quite miserable. Actually, the last week hasn't been that bad. Um, they weren't very itchy, but I mean, I had, I don't know how many I had, hundreds of them. I had like 70 just on my face. At least there ain't much to work with here in the first place, <laughs> but uh, at least most of those are gone. My nose is still real red. If I take my hat off, you know, you can still see a lot of the bumps but I had to get a video made. Uh, I've seen a lot of people say that when adults get chicken pox, they're worse than as a child. I have nothing to compare those two, but I can say that like the first week that I had them, it was extremely miserable. Uh, I had high fever, like 103, and it felt like, if you ever, if you ever seen Delta Force, <laughs> where Chuck Norris grabs that guy up underneath his rib, that's what my ribs felt like for the first week. So anyway, the last several days, I felt fine. I just can't, you know, I don't want to get around anybody because I don't want it to spread. But anyway, I digress. Let's get back to this uh, raised garden bed. I'm going to start out with the one that I did that was the galvanized roofing sheets. And then I used just minimal wood on this project. Let's see how it looks today. Yeah, uh, not very impressive. It must have fallen apart just like everybody said it would in the comments, right? Wrong. Actually, it held up really well. Uh, we ended up giving this to my sister just because we redid this whole area. This whole area was our garden. And we used the back to Eden method where you throw down the wood chips. But the problem is we didn't wait before we planted. And so the wood chips basically stole all the nitrogen out of the ground. And we had a really hard time growing anything back here. It was just, everything was very weak. I mean, it was deprived of nitrogen. The potatoes actually did pretty well, but I mean, I'm not a gardener. Kim's the gardener, so I don't know a lot about this stuff. Right now, what this thing is, I can see here is a giant ant bed. This actually held up really well. A lot of people had questions about whether uh, the metal would make the soil get really hot. And I never noticed that. Kim, did you ever notice? Actually, I always thought the soil actually kept the metal cool. Yeah, it was, it was never hot to my touch. I mean, it felt fine. Yeah, and we put strawberries and sweet potatoes in here and they both did amazing in here. Like I said, the only reason that we took this down and my sister has it put back up now at her house is because we're getting rid of all this. We're just gonna put sod in here or throw some grass seed out or whatever because we've moved the garden out front. I did mention after I made this that I should have put some more wood support in the bottom to keep it from bowing out, but we didn't really have a problem with it bowing out because let me show you what we did. We actually used the Hugel culture method on this thing. So we started out by putting old wood and logs down in the bottom for a couple of reasons. Uh, that's just stuff that can break down. That's organic material that can break down over time, but it does take a long time to do it. But also it makes it easier and cheaper to, uh, to fill the beds up. So you can see that's what we laid all these down in the bottom of the bed before we threw the dirt on there. And it held up fine. Even, you know, we took this down two months ago, Kim. Uh, probably like five or six. <laughs> well, not really because we uh, made the other planter bed. 
Must have been maybe four or five months ago. It was for fall planting. Okay. November. Anywho. Yeah. So okay. We, uh, up until just recently, this still had the, the sides. You can see how the sides held up. Like this, this only came down after the rain hit it. And the dogs. And the dogs and everything. Huh. It was a sweet potato. Hey, there's another sweet oh, potato. Nice. Look at that. Another little sweet potato. And you dug those sweet potatoes out. Well, how long ago would you say, Kim? <laughs> Maybe two months. <laughs> months ago, we dug those sweet potatoes out. Unfortunately, whenever I built that, it was really cheap because those galvanized panels were only 15 bucks a piece. And I think in some areas, those, those galvanized panels are, I don't know, close to like 40 bucks now because of uh, inflation. So it's kind of crazy. Um, let's go look at the cedar beds. Those were the first raised beds that I built. It's kind of a mess back over here in this corner because Basically, like I said, we're redoing the whole backyard. These were the first ones that I built, and I used cedar, um, fence yeah, cedar fence planks to build these, which made it cost far less. The whole goal here was that I didn't want to use any pressure-treated lumber. Supposedly, that's okay to use, but I don't, I don't believe that. I mean, maybe it is, but I'm not going to do it because the, the liquid is literally right there to leach out, so I'm not going to use that. So anyway, the tops of these were cedar, and then I just used a fur four by four for the legs. You know, a lot of people said that uh, these were gonna rot. I mean, these are just right on the ground. There is, I mean, they're perfectly fine. And these have worked out really well. The only reason I didn't build more stuff out of cedar is just because, you know, if you get dimensional lumber out of cedar, it is like insanely expensive. The, the way to go is with the fence pickets if you can build as much with that as possible and kim's planted what have you planted in here all your herbs and everything uh, yes i have herbs over here um i've transplanted a lot to the new big garden that we have so we have parsley and fennel and there's some ginger and stuff out there everything's dead right now because it's just coming out of winter but um mint oregano so this is kind of like my first herb garden area but now like i said I'm transplanting and ju this is just a catch-all for our pretty flowers that are not so pretty at the moment but yeah and then it's been great they cut up wonderful and it's great on the back yeah the, the the height on these is really nice so these what are these these are about three feet high and the one in the back the one that we just were at the galvanized roofing one was two foot high and let's go around back to the front and look at what's going on back there. Actually, while we're back here, might as well kind of give you an update on some other stuff. Uh, let's go to the chicken coop. This is the chicken slash guinea coop that uh, we built as a family several months back. This thing has been amazing. We love this it's thing. It's day five of my three day chicken coop build. The chicken coop mocks me. I've lost the will. Nothing. One of the tricks that we do as far as getting soil compost is we learned this from watching Justin Rhodes. We throw untreated wood chips in here, like the same wood chips like we have in the back, back around where the old garden was. So we can just take, once we throw the dirt back down there and sod, I'm gonna get up those wood chips and put them in a pile so that I can continue to throw them in here. But you know, when we originally built this, we had like 20 guineas and six chickens. And we ended up actually ended up getting rid of all of the guineas just because they were too loud. And we kept the six chickens and the guineas went to my sister. <laughs> but the chickens have been awesome. I mean, if you don't have, if you don't have backyard, backyard chickens, you need to get some backyard chickens. I didn't understand when Kim wanted to get chickens. I was like, mm, okay, whatever. And until you come out and you get like five eggs every day out of your chicken coop is awesome. But this method of throwing down the wood chips uh, is what it does is there's no smell because you can throw down extra food chem will throw down stuff from the garden that, that we don't use you see there's a hen back in there brooding is that echo that is waffles waffles okay the girls gave all the chickens <laughs> names so that's waffles she's sitting back there but by throwing the wood chips down as the chickens poop on everything it never stinks in here you never smell chicken and to clean anything. yeah there's nothing to clean i mean 
she keeps like a tub of diatomaceous earth back there for them to, to bathe in. But, and there has never been a smell in here whatsoever. Now we let the chickens free roam now. We used to not do that to begin with, but Kim felt bad for them, wanted to give them uh, more room, basically a happier, <laughs> happier chicken life. Every once in a while we do have to keep an eye out though. There was a bald eagle up here the other day. Bald eagle, just chilling up in the tree. Him frantically. <laughs> my babies up. <laughs> Getting the chickens put up. He's up there. He's like, hey, look at there. He's free like, meat. free food down there. He's beautiful now. <laughs> That's not their normal food, but I'm sure they'll take a chicken out if it's easy, easy pickings. Sometimes the other day I had to run it here because there was a hawk that was right above them in the trees. They like to go back here in the woods and explore back here during the day. But anyway, I digress. Come in here and I'll show you. Uh, it's pretty cool. So all we did when we put the chickens in here was throw down wood chips. That's it. Just straight up wood chips. And if you pull the wood chips away, I mean, check this out. What that's from, look at that compost. That's just, that's the food laying on there. And then the chickens pick and scratch at the food. And then they poop on it. And then they scratch and they they put their uh poop in there and they're basically just constantly churning it so it makes like this super compost and all you have to do is throw wood chips in here and like i said there's there has never been any smell even when the chickens stayed in here all day when they were younger um, so it's just an amazing process thank you justin rhodes uh, for showing us that of course they do love coming up here on the concrete and pooping if they can sneak into the garage even better the amazing thing is that um, <laughs> Storm and Havoc, you take two extremely high prey drive dogs and they've actually gotten to the point where they don't bother these chickens anymore. We can let them out to go to the bathroom and they just run past the chickens. They don't care. Yeah. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. Each box has around $70 of value in it, but you only pay a fraction of that. They have outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more. 90% of the products in Bespoke Post boxes come from small businesses, many of which are based right here in the U.S. You get a box assigned to you each month based on the quiz you take when signing up, and you get a preview before it ships. You can keep it, swap it for a different box on offer, or skip the entire month for no charge. You only pay for what you want, and the box lineup changes every month. This is the Weekender box. It says this really cool bag that you could use for trips or tools even. It's very classic looking. Let's open the grounds box. We've got a knife from SOG. Got a camp carabiner, some reusable zip ties. This is one of the coolest things to me is this climate v seat this is the terra box this is really awesome this is from bare bones really nice sheath here okay, this is a knife a saw on the other and it's basically a scoop this is like a survival tool or a gardening tool i love this thing base light detox scrub bar and an audubon bird call To get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description and enter Haxman20 at checkout or go to bespokepost.com forward slash Haxman20. So to find out where our center is here, put your, uh, to put your little thingamajobobber, I'm just gonna put these flags down. I don't have any stakes. I'm just gonna go from corner to corner on these planters. So we know that this is the center between our garden, between our raised beds. Oh, yeah. 
Which way do you want the arms? This way or that? That way. You want them face like this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like. Yes, like that. <laughs> Thank you. The back side's the better side. Can you face it front though? <laughs> I'm kidding. Beautiful. Thank you, baby. Hope I don't dig up my dahlia bulbs. Put them somewhere in here. Now, what are you putting these flowers in here for? Bring the bees for pollination. <laughs> pollination. Oh, this one does say what it is. This is a penny blue viola. I didn't know that. Okay. I just thought it was pretty. And I put it. I put it, I put it down some <laughs> black cow manure because it's been a year since this has been done. Oh, I guess only like two months since it's been done. Anyway, it, uh, raised beds lose their nutritional value for the plants faster than in the ground. So it's good to put some more fertilizer, make them happy. Oh, look how pretty. What's this right there in the center? That is a butterfly bush. It's coming back. It has new growth on it. It's pretty ugly right now, but it's going to be beautiful and it has purple flowers on it. Now I got this one from the store because it was full of bumblebees, so I knew I had to have it. So what about the three by five cement backer board raised bed planter that I built? I built this about six months ago and this one really had Speaking of really, there's a really lot of sand gnats out here. So this one had a ton of comments because a lot of people said, oh, cement backer board, that's just gonna crumble. Cement backer board is used outside all the time in like outdoor grill areas and everything. And then they basically stucco over it. And that's essentially what I did here was when I glued up these two pieces of cement backer board, I glued them up using uh, construction adhesive and then I covered them in cement. And these have been out here now for about six months. And so far, you know, now we don't live in a hard freeze area. We're in a zone nine, we're in the south, okay? So I can't say what would happen if, you know, you had um, a lot of freeze cycles. Oh, these sand gnats are driving me insane. But as far as for here, there's been zero deterioration. And we've had, we've had some freezing, but you know, I'm talking about 27 degrees. Uh, you know, one of my concerns, the reason why I doubled it up was because I didn't want any bulging. And on this one side over here, you can see that there's just a minimal bulge right here. And on the back side, there's nothing. So this thing has held up really well. I've been really pleased with it. Our intention was originally to make all of our garden beds. Pardon the neighbor's dog in the background. It is my curse in life to always have a neighbor with a barking dog next to me. I don't know what I, I don't know how far I got to move out. But anyway, our original plan was to make all of the raised beds out of this. And essentially, I just ran out of time. Kim wanted, how many beds do we have here, Kim? 18. 18. Kim wanted 18 raised beds and she needed them quick for the planting season for fall, right? Yeah. For fall. And uh, I just didn't have time to make them. So my sister came and spent the day with us. And I just built these all out of, uh, two by 12 pine, these are untreated. And these things have worked out great. I was able to lay out like a pattern out here like Kim wants and eventually maybe we'll put a small greenhouse in the center. But we have gotten, she just dug up the last of the collard greens yesterday and we've already gotten several meals. Cause what's cool is like, she didn't have to come out here and dig up the collards like you would at the store. She just came out here and cut off uh, enough for supper and we had several suppers out of this and I'm talking about big I'm talking about feeding seven eight nine people now I do know that these are going to rot away in a few years and that's just something I have to deal with and right now Kim's got strawberries planted in here and carrots planted back here and kind of our plan is maybe over maybe in a year 
we'll come back with another layer of two by 12s so that we can bring these up higher because two foot is a nice height for a raised bed. And then as they begin to rot, what I may do is actually use them almost as a form and I'll build another form on the outside and fill it with concrete. And that way the wood can just rot inside the concrete. I'll pull that form off, move the form over to the next one, fill it up with concrete, and we'll just kind of go along and along, see how that works out. Over here, Kim wanted to put, <laughs> she wanted to pretty it up a little bit. So we just took a cattle panel and two T-posts and I painted it all black. And eventually peas will grow up over this thing and it'll be nice and pretty. And if you ever wonder how to put a 16 foot cattle panel in the back of your pickup truck, it's very easy. Just how we have this right here, you just whoop, lay it down in the bed of your truck like that. A lot of people try to figure out how to get a, a 16 foot cattle panel home and basically just stand it upside beside you like this, lay it in the back of the truck, just how it is standing up right here. And it's super easy. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to try to get more videos up maybe more often, maybe twice a week. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. If that's something you're interested in. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.